Good morning and welcome. My name is Laura Fleek. I'm an adult programming librarian with the Fresno County Public Library. Um, I work out of the Woodward Park branch. I am very happy to welcome Roz Tampone of the Fresno Master Gardeners back to our Zoom programs. If you have any questions, please submit them throughout the program. I'll be keeping track through the Q&A button at the bottom and uh, Roz will be happy to answer your questions. Roz, why don't you go ahead? I do think you need to unmute though. Well, everyone, welcome to uh, In a World of Cactus. And I think it was uh, titled Glorious Cacti in Bloom. Um, so I'd like to get started. Uh, like Laura had said, I'm a master gardener of Fresno County but I'm also a member of the Fresno Cactus and Succulent Society, as well as a member of the Cactus and Succulent Society of America. And I'll share those uh, websites with you um, at the end of the program in case you're interested in uh, joining either of those organizations. So what did one cactus say to the other? Stick to me, we'll go places. And just a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in New York, outside of New York City. I have both a bachelor's and a master's degree from the State University of New York at New Paltz. I taught in Sanger for 35 years as a special ed teacher and a principal. I married my high school sweetheart, Pete Tampone, and my interests include uh, succulent and cactus gardening, traveling, photography, fishing, doing some exercise, reading, and classic rock music. So let's begin. Um, what I hope to accomplish today is to teach you a little bit about the ABCs of growing cactus. I'll um, share some common cacti with you, as well as pests that affect cactus. And I'll share with you some of the tools I use for replanting and what happens if you get spines in your fingers. And then I'll also show you some cacti in the landscape, as well as places that you can visit to see cactus. So a few reasons to like cactus is that they provide a safe haven for birds. Um, hard to believe with all the spines they have on it, but it actually is a safe haven for them. Uh, some of them are extremely odd looking. The flowers when they're in bloom are just awesome. And when viewed from above, some cacti look like snowflakes. And the more spines it has, the more beautiful it is when it's backlit. So cacti uh, can be found from tropical jungles to the driest deserts. They, they're grown from sea level to snow peaked mountains. So they can be found growing in a huge range of environments. So what we're gonna be talking about today, um, cactus are mostly found in the Southwest United States, which would be located here, parts of Mexico, the Baja Peninsula, Argentina, Bolivia, Chile, all in South America. So uh, a very small number of cacti make their home in a true desert. That's one that receives less than 10 inches of rainfall a year. Um, but that's kind of surprising because Fresno actually falls into that category. So far this year, we've only had six inches of rainfall and I'm not quite sure if we're gonna have much more, although we are expecting some this week. Many cactus live on rocky mountain slopes, and uh, you can especially find them in nooks and crannies in those mountain slopes. And, but the one thing that cacti all have in common is that they're, um, they live in soil that's quite well drained, protecting the plants from excessive moisture. So a cactus, the plural is cacti or cactuses, some people say cactus is plural, is a member of the plant family Cactacea. There are more than 2,000 members 
of the family Cactacea. So some may ask, what's the difference between a succulent and a cactus? Well, the word succulent is a descriptive term that um, has plants that store their water in their stems or their leaves. And cactus is the name of a large family of plants. So all cacti are succulents, but not all succulents are cacti. So again, what's the difference? It's not completely true, but most say that spines are the distinguishing characteristic between cacti and succulents. And some may not know this, but some cacti are not prickly, yet there are prickly succulents. So cacti have aerials or spine cushions, and this would be the spine cushion or the aerial on a cactus. And here is the spine cushion where the spines are coming out of the aerial. So succulents, even if they're spiny, lack the spine cushion. And one example would be this succulent aloe, which has teeth along the edges of the leaves, but they are not uh, spine cushions. So there's four basic structures of cacti. There's globular cacti, like this Echinocactus grusini, which is also known as the golden ball cactus. There's columnar cactus, like this blue columnar cactus. There's leaf-like or pad cactus, like these opuntias. And there's the elongated or prostate cactus, like this Helioceros cactus, which is a, um, a beautiful, a beautiful cactus. So some globular cactus are the golden barrel cactus, also known as Echinocactus grusini. A columnar cactus could be like this old man cactus, the um, Cephalocereus senilis. A padded cactus could be like the Opuntia, Opuntia baby Rita prickly pear, which is a beautiful purple tinge Opuntia, or the bunny ears cactus, Opuntia microdes albispina. Now, the one thing about these albispinas is they have glockids, and when glockids get into your skin, they're extremely hard to remove. Some beautiful elongated uh, cactus would be the Christmas cactus, Schlumbergera bucklei, or Schlumbergera truncata. Now, as far as watering goes, that's probably the most difficult part of owning cactus. So what you need to do is adjust, adjust your watering schedule for each season. So during the, scro the growing season, which usually is from spring to fall, your cacti want regular watering and fertilizing. And so um, starting about maybe three weeks ago, I started watering and fertilizing my cactus. And when I fertilize, I fertilize at one quarter the strength. And currently I use things that are like a, um, like Miracle Grow or More Bloom uh, to encourage flowering. And um, the cactus really do very well with that watering schedule. So in the hottest and driest month, you thoroughly water your cactus at least once a week but let your cactus dry out between waterings. So those top few inches of soil should be completely dried out. And your cactus should remain dry during the winter months. Otherwise you'll have a problem called rot where it affects the roots. Now, as far as soil goes, there's a variety of soil types that make up the natural habitat of cactus. Again, they can be found throughout North America, 
Central America, Argentina, and Brazil. They can be found in deserts, grasslands, chaparrales, subtropical forests. So the soil composition is very different. But for here in the valley, if you don't want to create your own soil, you can buy a packaged cactus, palm, and citrus mix. But you want to add some additional um, fast draining materials like pumice, perlite, or sand. And one thing to keep, in com uh, to keep in mind is pumice is heavier, and so it will stay throughout the soil where your perlite tends to float to the top of the pots. But a fast draining soil is a must for growing cactus. And so another good soil mix that you could use is two parts potting soil, one part perlite or pumice, and one part small gravel that will give you a fast draining um, soil mix. As far as temperature, um, they usually like nighttime temps of 45 to 50 degrees. And the ideal temperature for most cacti is between 65 and 90. And most of them need warm weather to survive. But during the dormant months, somewhere around maybe the end of October, through January, February are the dormant months for uh, cactus. Um, so you wanna make sure that you keep the soil dry. You don't need to water them at all. And if there's a frost predicted, um, you can cover your cactus with frost cloth, sheets, pillowcases, but don't use plastic. So uh, when I'm transplanting, you know, you always worry about whether you're going to get some of those spines in your fingers or your arms. So I always wear my gardening gloves when I'm transplanting. Um, you can also use some rolled up newspaper to get your cactus out of your um, container. And if it's a larger cactus, you may want to use a piece of rug to uh, remove the cactus from the pot. But my cactus are pretty small, so I like to use tongs, which give you a great grip, long handle tweezers for real small uh, cactus, um, a flat spatula I use so that uh, if, a, if a plant is stuck in a pot, and it doesn't matter if it's my succulents or my cactus, I just use that flat spatula around the edges to dislodge it from the pot. But I also use chopsticks when I'm transplanting, uh, scoops, and your scoops can be any kind, but just to get your soil into the container. And one of the things that I use all the time is a cement tub. And this way I can plant in there, I can repot in there, I can keep all these tools in there, um, and everything is easy to uh, keep clean. And then one other thing you want to have are snips of some sort so that you can trim roots or dead leaves um, if you need to. So when I'm transplanting, I usually choose a pot one size bigger than the previous pot. I choose a pot to complement the cactus. You can remove the cactus from the pot, inspect the roots. If there are any damaged roots, remove those plant your cactus in a fast draining soil, but wait a few days to water, uh, usually a few days or a week after. So what do you do when you get cactus spines in your fingers? Well, if you have a good pair of tweezers and they're visible, you can pull out those cactus spines. Um, if that doesn't work, you can try adding like a thin layer of glue covered with gauze, which is allowed to dry, then remove the gauze and hopefully those spines will come out. Uh, you can try to and then peel off to remove those individual spines. Um, I've used a credit card to uh, scrape off the spines, uh, but you can also use tape. But if they become embedded and they cause an infection, you're best to seek medical advice. So what kinds of critters or diseases will attack your cactus? 
One of the most common is uh, a red spider mite. Uh, they're very small. When they're starving, they turn straw colored or red. And a way you can check for spider mites is if you put a sheet of white paper underneath your plant and shake the leaves, if those brown or red dots start to move, it's spider mites. Now, the way I treat spider mites is with a spray of water. A more serious uh, outbreak is with mealybugs, and it's one of the most common pests of cacti. Um, there are tiny areas of cotton-like material appear on the plants. You can see that. And a small insect will be found um, living underneath each cottony patch. The eggs can live in the soil, so you may need to repot it. So your treatment for that can be a solution of your insecticidal soap applied directly with a Q-tip or paintbrush or in a spray bottle. But one thing that I tend to use um, pretty often is a spray of isopropyl alcohol. And I keep that in a little spray bottle that's maybe three inches. And whenever I see pests in my, whether it's on succulents or cactus, I take out the alcohol and that seems to work. Sometimes you may need a second application of that. And a real common um, one that attacks, especially the flowers, are aphids. Um, aphids can be red, green, yellow, or black. They damage the plant by puncturing the flower buds and the young tissues near the growing tips. So uh, just like you can with uh, aphids on roses, you can give them a good spray with water. Um, but if they're real small, like on the um, flower buds, like they are here, I use that spray of isopropyl alcohol. And another um, insect that attacks cactus are scale. Uh, they're very small insects that are fixed to the surface of the plant. If you have only a few of them, they can be scraped off with your fingernail, but they can also be removed with a solution of soapy water or a spray of isopropyl alcohol. And the isopropyl alcohol I use is uh, full strength 70%. Um, a really serious uh, outbreak of cochinea scale is a cottony white mass on the surface of the cactus. It's especially prevalent on the Opuntia prickly pear or the Hoya cacti. And you can see a severe outbreak here. It, uh, what happens is the scale suck on the cactus leaves and they can kill the plant. And what, when you, uh, touch them, they produce a red smear. And so you can try neem oil, insecticidal soap, cochineal scale treatment. Um, but the Aztecs did use this, uh, use that red dye for dyeing and painting in their artwork. And in February of this year, I found rot on my favorite notocactus. As you can see, the whole top of this notocactus was attacked by root rot. And it was from, um, it's interesting, it was a three headed notocactus, but only one head of the uh, notocactus was destroyed. And I used a hacksaw to try to remove, um, I wanted to see how far down the uh, disease had attacked. And you can see it's all the way down to the bottom of the plant. I ended up removing uh, the plant from the pot. And a good friend of mine, uh, Elton Roberts, who grows cacti up in Ripon, he shared with me what to do. So he said, take it out of the pot and blow a fan on it for four or five days, which I did, then repot it. Um, so I did repot it. I started watering maybe three weeks ago. So I'm hoping this notocactus will bloom this spring. And you can see the flowers on this notocactus were just beautiful. Some of my favorite um, flowers of my cactus. 
So now I'd like to share with you some popular cacti. And in here, you can see just an assortment of beautiful cacti in bloom. So one is serious. There are columnar cacti that have branches. These cacti can reach nine to 15 feet tall. You propagate them through seeds or cuttings. Um, I think you have to be very diligent to be able to propagate through seeds. So most of the times you can find pups on the bottom or take cuttings of the plants. Um, but the one thing is they produce beautiful six inch long flowers. They bloom in the summer and they bloom at night. Their origin is Argentina and they like full sunlight. But you can see if you have this growing in your garden, um, what a spectacular specimen it can be. Another um, very common uh, cactus is your Aquino cactus. This Grusenai, also called golden barrel cactus, golden ball or mother-in-law's cushion, is a globular cacti. It's concave at the apex, means it dips in a little. It's dark green and at maturity, it can reach three feet in diameter and three and a half feet uh, in height. The apex is covered with cream felt and it has 28 to 32 ribs. Um, and all the spines are bright yellow, but they become white in old age. The flowers they produce are a little indiscriminate. Um, they're brown hair-like petals, yellow on the outside. They do flower in the summer. Their, or their origin is Mexico. And again, you can propagate through seeds or through pups. Ferrocactus are beautiful cactus, like this ferrocactus willisindii. It's a globular two columnar cactus. There are 30 species in this genus. They uh, originate in the Southwest USA or Mexico. This uh, ferrocactus willisindii is also known as the fishhook or barrel cactus, um, Arizona barrel cactus or candy barrel cactus. It can grow up to six and a half feet tall and it has a heavy hook at the end of each spine. And so if you get these stuck in there, you may need to use a pair of pliers to get them out of you. Uh, you propagate from seeds or pups. They flower in the summer uh, and they produce a bell-shaped two and a half inch long flowers. Mammillaria is probably one of the largest um, genera in the cactus family. There are over 200 known species. Um, the pincushion cactus um, is called Mammillaria carnea and the Mar Mar Mammillaria elongata the gold lace cactus or ladyfinger cactus um, is probably the first mammillaria I've had. Uh, the thing with this cactus is it does produce small white flowers at the apex. Um, but one thing you can tell about most mammillaria is uh, when they flower, they have like a concentric circle around the uh, apex. And uh, they can flower many times during the summer. So this is my notocactus that I lost one head of it. So you could see how beautiful it was. I never realized how much destruction was on the back sides of these. But um, when I was growing them, you couldn't really tell that. But when they're backlit, they're just gorgeous plants. That's Parodia, also called Notocactus warasii. So Cephalocereus uh, sinellus is the old man cactus. It's usually a single elongated stem. Um, they can grow up to 50 feet tall. Their flowers are night blooming in the spring and their fruit is covered with cream hair. They need moderate to full sunlight. 
you propagate them through seeds and they originate in Mexico. Now, probably what got me into raising cactus are these rebutia and this rebutia krugeri in particular. It's in a four inch pot. And when I first got it, it had many of these little buds all around the top. Three or four days after I got it, it produced all these blooms. And since then, I've gathered 14 different rebutias. Um, the origin is Argentina and Bolivia. Uh, they have a depressed apex. Um, they send out many uh, flowers from the base, resulting in a uh, bell-shaped flowers that can be yellow, red, pink, violet, or a bright reddish orange. Um, they require a strict rest period in the winter, protect them from low temperatures, and uh, you can propagate through cuttings or through seeds. What I usually do is I remove one of the pups off of the sides. I haven't had any luck growing them from seed. Here's a few more rebutias in bloom. Probably one of my favorites, the rebutia carnival. This photo is from last summer. The rebutia pipes of peace. And just so that you know, these cacti are not much bigger than your fingernail. Even though they're in a mound, each individual cactus is really small and can fit into a four or six inch pot. So you don't need to have large spaces to grow these beautiful cacti. And another one of my favorites, the Rebutia Sunrise. These are probably three of my favorite Rebutias. Here's Rebutia Rebigniosa. Rebutia Heliosa and Rebutia Steinmani. And this Steinmani is probably the largest Rebutia I have, which may be four or five inches long and maybe even an inch and a half thick. Areocarpus is another um, cactus. It's a ball-shaped cactus, which produces white uh, filaments. Uh, their tuberous roots are susceptible to overwatering. They need strong sunlight. These do not have spines, but these tubercles have points on them. Uh, they come in various colors of pale gray to green. You only water them during the summer. Their bloom time is in the fall and they have flowers of pink, cream, yellow, or magenta. Slumbergia bridgesii, also known as the Christmas cactus. Uh, there are six to nine species found in uh, the mountains of southeastern Brazil. They usually bloom, for us here in the valley, they bloom usually January, February but most of the times they bloom November, December, January. They grow best in light shade. They like to be root bound, so you can repot them every three or four years. You propagate by cuttings and the flowers are carmine red with white centers. The saguaro cactus is the state flower of Arizona. It's pronounced Carnegie Gigantia, and it was actually named after Andrew Carnegie, the oil tycoon. Um, the saguaro is pronounced saguaro, and it's the largest cacti in the United States. It can reach heights of 40 feet tall, although, although the uh, tallest one was measured at 78 feet tall. Uh, it grows at a very slow rate at the growing tip. By 70 years of age, it can reach six feet tall. By 95 to 100 years of age, it's 15 to 16 feet tall. And by 200 years old, um, it's 45 feet tall. 
And so uh, as you're traveling through Arizona, uh, you can see some really ancient um, saguaro cactus growing. Now this is a crested saguaro cactus. It's unusual. The um, growing tip on that, also called the meristem, had some sort of damage done to it. Uh, it could have been disease, it could have been cold, it could have been heat, which caused this mutation on this saguaro cactus. And this one is called the Princess of the Nile cactus, Selenocerius tyranthus. It's the most popular night blooming cacti. It's a leafless epiphyte. And an epiphyte is a plant that grows on another plant, but it's not parasitic. It's like ferns, bromeliads, air plants, and orchids growing on trees in tropical rainforests. The flowers are spectacular. Um, they can grow, uh, the actual plant can grow up to 13 meters long, which is about 13 meters would be close to 39 feet. Uh, the flowers are very fragrant, trumpet shaped, um, and they can be about 12 inches long. And But the one thing about these flowers is they last only one evening. It's really too bad because they're really quite beautiful. So now I'd like to show you some cacti in the landscape. Um, one of the Cactus and Succulent Society members in Fresno um, passed away recently, but before he passed away, his whole yard was devoted to cactus and succulents. And you can see that in addition to the columnar cactus that he's growing, and you can see some of these have been planted many, many years ago. He also has agaves growing, roses growing, as well as uh, grasses. Some beautiful trees in the background, some golden barrel cactus, and here's that uh, Rita opuntia, the purple-hued cactus, and some uh, notocactus. But boulders and stream beds can add an interesting dimension to your landscape. Some beautiful um, agaves and aloes are growing amongst the cactus, as well as this really interesting dazzlerian. And this is another friend's home at the uh, Cactus and Succulent Society of Fresno. Um, he has both cactus and succulents growing in his garden. And he's been working on this for close to 40 years, as you can tell by the age of some of these cacti. And again, interspersing them with uh, succulents. These succulents are facing eastward, so they're not getting the full sun like a western sun would give you. And if you would like to see um, some other uh, landscapes in Fresno, you can go to this website and it will take you uh, to the Waterwise Gardening Fresno region. And one thing that it will do is as you pass over each of these uh, plants, it will give you the name of the plant and a little description of it. Um, I do have it where I wanna show it to you maybe a little bit later uh, in the presentation. But if you'd like to get that website, you can take a photograph of that and it will take you there. And you can find all kinds of front yard and backyard landscapes in the Fresno area. Now, one thing when I was traveling, I went to uh, the Ireland Botanical Garden and lo and behold, there were cacti and succulents growing outside as well as in the conservatory. 
They had agaves and columnar cactus, as well as this tabuliform aeonium and some really beautiful um, echeverias growing. You can see those there as well as some agaves. And one place in Fresno where you can uh, go to see a lot of different cacti is right next door to the Garden of the Sun at the Deutsch Cactus Garden, which is at the Discovery Center in Fresno. It's in need of a little uh, weeding right now. The fellow that used to take care of it uh, passed away a few years ago. So it's in a little bit of uh, neglect, but some of the math, uh, some of the, uh, Cactus and Succulent Society are going to be going out there and doing some cleanup in the cactus beds. But you can see some Opuntia cactus there, as well as yuccas and agaves. Some uh, columnar uh, cacti, as well as golden barrel. And you can see this old mother um, Echinocactus grusenii but the young pups that grow all around it. And these can be removed fairly easily to start new plants. And one place where you can go is if you're traveling down south near um, San Marino, California, is the Huntington Gardens, where you can see really well-labeled uh, cactus, like this ferro cactus, and this Echinocactus grusenii again. Ferrocactus macrodiscus. And you can see when they're in flower, they're quite beautiful. And this is a blue agave, but check out that flower stalk. Now, one thing you may not know about agaves is once they flower, which usually takes them about six to eight months to come completely in flower. The uh, mother plant dies. But here you can also see the apuntias, the golden barrels, and uh, this looks like a tree aloe here, as well as a coral aloe. Here you have the Cleistocactus straussii, the woolly torch cactus. And a sea of golden barrel cactus. When you walk through that, it's, uh, it's really quite amazing. And if you do decide to travel to the Huntington Gardens, I really recommend going in April if you want to see cactus in bloom. And here's a woolly torch cactus and sunburst aeonium. It's the same um, picture I have behind me in this Zoom presentation. Um, these sunburst aeoniums are one of my favorite uh, succulents. So some cacti provide a safe haven for birds. You can see this um, owlet a cactus wren on a Hoya, and a peach-faced lovebird. That's probably down in Mexico somewhere. Um, some of the cacti are very odd looking, like this Sirius Peruviana monstros. It's again that um, odd shaped cactus, as well as a brain cactus. The flowers when they're in bloom are just awesome, like this gymnocalcium. And the more spines it has, the more beautiful it looks when backlit. And from above, some cacti look like snowflakes. So that's the end of my presentation. Are there any questions? 
Well, thank you, Roz. This has been a really educational uh, program, and you obviously are very passionate and love your cacti. <laughs> um, I thought it was interesting of all these, they, cacti seem to have the most complicated uh, names. <laughs> they have <laughs> very long. I was going to ask, uh, we were going to ask on the, um, the plants, Roz, do you have any recommendations, uh, particularly if you've got a very small yard or, or the differences what you recommend between, say, someone who wants to cover a big space and someone who wants to be a little more uh, decorative, uh, smaller uh, well, cactus, one, which... The columnar cactus, you know, just about anything that you're going to put in your uh, garden, in the, in the landscape, um, you kind of want it in an area where children and pets are not going to get into because those spines can be very difficult uh, to get out. But um, if you want, the golden barrel cactus um, can look beautiful. And many of these plants can look really beautiful in containers where you can move them around from one spot to another. But these ferro cactus and noto cactus will give you beautiful blooms in the springtime. So those would be some that I would, um, that I would look at. Um, your uh, astrophytums might be some that you can put in because they don't have uh, the spines on them. And then if there's ones that uh, you would, the opuntias, um, sometimes people back up into them and then get them in their rears. And then they really become hard to get those spines out of. Um, so those are good if you want to have like a, a hedge and a, a division or a barrier between two properties. Uh, those would be good. Um, and what I would recommend is um, if you're interested, the Cactus and Succulent Society well, let me just share with you this. Here's the bibliography that I used to complete this uh, presentation today. But the Fresno Cactus and Succulent Society, uh, they meet uh, once a month at the uh, Redeemer Lutheran Church on Bullard, which is just west of Palm. And you can come there and um, they often have plants for sale. Um, and they're doing a show and sale at the beginning of June, which I have something that you can um, take a picture of. But there's also the Cactus and Succulent Society of America that does Zooms twice a month and people attend from around the world. They have world renowned speakers. And there you can learn about more of the uh, different kinds of cactus and succulents and where they're grown in habitat. So I wanted to share that with you. But as far as getting back to uh, which ones you can grow, I would probably start with some that you could grow in pots and uh, see if you like them. Then, uh, you know, try to plant some uh, maybe larger cacti in the ground. But seeing some uh, landscapes like at the Deutsch Garden or at the uh, Huntington or at the, um, you know, many of the botanical gardens in town, you'll be able to get ideas for uh, plants that you can grow. And most of them will have labels on them. Okay. So that you know which plant it is. Okay, a couple good questions here. Uh, one asks, and this is probably, you can get this, where's a good, do you have a recommended website where we can go to find information about identity of a cacti? So you, um, actually at your library is where I would go. I would go first um, because your library has succulents of the world and you can look through those to try to find it. As far as an actual website, um, I don't have that. I can look that up and maybe have it posted on our uh, Master Gardener website as far as one. But 
usually what they have are, um, you can usually find succulents. Uh, but I would just, I would Google um, cactus and maybe Google cactus photos so that you can see the names of different ones. Okay, uh, I have two questions here. Maybe someone would like if you could reshow that picture of the uh, sunburst iconium. I think that wasn't too far. That was one of your later slides. And maybe while you're pulling that up, someone would also like to say that their cactus got soaked in the rain. How long should they let it dry out? Okay, for the cactus in the rain, I let that dry out for four or five days with a fan blowing on it the entire time. And after that, I repotted it and then I did not water it for about six weeks. Oh, wow. Um, will cactus tolerate wood mulch in a mixed garden? Um, yeah, I think they can. So you still want to have, they're best if you put them on a mound. If you look at some of the pictures from like the, um, let me see if I can go back and find the Huntington. But many of those are on, and I think that was the one that they wanted to see, that sunburst aeonium. Beautiful. And I'm not quite sure what the question was with that, other than they just wanted to see it. I think so. I think so. Okay. Um, and those can be found uh, occasionally. You can find them at the nurseries in uh, in Fresno, but I do know they will be at the Cactus and Succulent Society show and sale in uh, June. But see, most of these are on kind of a raised bed in a very um, sandy granite type of soil. So if you're gonna grow something in the ground, it really needs to be well-drained. Um, I do think you can put some of your uh, wood chips around it, but I would maybe put it maybe six inches away from each of the cactus that you're growing. Okay, and then, uh had a request that while you're flipping through here, maybe you put your reference list up again. The which one? The reference, your reference list. Oh, yes. Let me, use. oh, there it is. And I do know. These were some of the books that I used. Um, one that I really, really like are uh, the Sunset books. Um, they're kind of, they have, they have some old pictures and sometimes you can find them at the, um, at the book sales that the library does, but they have some of the best information on growing cactus and succulents. But these are all books that I have in my own personal collection. Okay. And one of my favorites um, is anything done by Deborah Lee Baldwin. Um, her succulent simplified gives you lots of ideas for growing succulents. Uh, I did want to share with some other um, some other master gardening information. Um, if you want, you can check out um, some additional classes that we're having, uh, some on Zoom, some at the libraries. And our, uh, on April 23rd, we'll be having our spring garden tour. And it will also be the last time our plant sale will be at the Garden of the Sun. On April 30th, uh, Pat Caffrey is teaching a class on iris. And um, if you have a, any questions about um, any kind of gardening question, you can email the uh, helpline, which is mgfresno at ucdavis.edu. You can also go to our website to see the gardening classes. And I'm gonna try to take you there now because I'd like to share with you. Well, let me do one thing first. I'm gonna come back to that, but I do wanna show you if you'd like to take a photo of this, the summer classes that we're offering from May through July. 
and it tells you where they'll be held, either at the Garden of the Sun, Woodward Park Library, Betty Rodriguez Library, or the Sunnyside uh, Regional Library. And if you'd like, you can take a photo of that. And if you want to take a picture of the um, postcard for the uh, Fresno Cactus and Succulent Society show and sale, it'll be down at the Fresno Fairgrounds. Um, they're also having that Central Valley Reptile and Pet Expo that same weekend. So now let me go back if you, um, but that'll be June 4th and 5th. Let me go back because I want to share with you. Let's see if we can get there. Okay, this takes you, uh, Laura, you can see the Cooperative Extension Fresno County. Uh, it's not coming up. Okay, let me stop the share for a second. And I'm going to share it again. Okay, now can you see it? Yes. Okay, so if you go to the Fresno County website, and then on the left side, there's all kinds of information. I'm not gonna go through all that, but if you hit Community Education Classes 2022, it takes you to our classes. There's the class that we're doing today. Uh, there was information about our educational day on April 2nd. Uh, information about our spring garden tour, where you can get tickets at many of the local uh, nurseries, as well as our website and the day of the tour, you can also get it. Uh, here's our growing and dividing irises class. But all these classes with a description are here on this uh, website. So these are the ones that we're offering this coming summer. Hopefully there'll be something there that you'd like to see. Um, I really recommend this one with Dr. Beth Tiviadale. She's probably one of the funniest uh, master gardeners uh, that we have. She's doing a class up at Woodward Park uh, Library on controlling pests in your garden. Another one on microgreens at the Betty Rodriguez Library. Uh, our first Zoom presentation is on herbs in July. But this is another one that I wanted to share with you. It's the first time we're going to do a panel, a Zoom panel, where they'll tell you a little bit about growing tomatoes, and then they're going to answer any of your questions. And it's four of our tomato gurus, uh, master gardeners who really excel in growing tomatoes. And then lastly, our cool weather veggies will be at Sunnyside um, Regional Library at the end of uh, July. So well, I really you, want Rob. to thank everybody for <laughs> attending today. Um, again, I am i don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning. I'm not an expert on cactus, but I do like sharing uh, information. And when I got turned on to those rebutias, I just realized how beautiful cactus are in bloom and wanted to share a little bit about the uh, growing of them as well as pests and hopefully it'll inspire you to try to get a cactus and um, enjoy it just like I have. So Laura, thank you for uh, organizing our gardening with the master gardeners or Zooming with the master gardeners. Thank you. We've had some really fantastic series of Zoom programs, which you can always find those on our website as well. The Master Gardener uh, website, the UC Davis, I highly recommend it. There's so many resources and they are always very generous with their time to answer any questions that people have. And thank you all for coming. We are going to have a little break in May as far as the libraries go, but you'll be seeing us as Roz said, over the summer. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all and everyone have a good day. And thank you again, Roz, for a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Laura.